Well, the Finance Ministry has rescheduled the mid-year budget review, which was expected to be delivered in Parliament tomorrow, to enable the, them to conclude talks with the IMF. According to the Deputy Finance Minister, Abinal Osasari, the new date for the statement is now the 25th of July this year, and the change has been necessitated by the ongoing talks with the IMF, which commenced last week. The Deputy Minister does not rule out changes to the statement which will arise because of talks with the fund. Take a listen. We all know that um, we have started some engagements with the IMF and the IMF were in town last week and they are supposed to leave on Wednesday. And usually when they come, this very mission is for data collection and we need all the space and time to enable us to give them all the data they are requesting for. So that's how come we are asking Parliament to um, um, postpone the mid-year so that um, when they leave on Wednesday, and then quickly we can start looking at it. Though we are, we are almost done with it, we'll start um, uh, looking at it, and then hopefully by the 25th, we will bring it to Parliament um, for, for um, submission. Um, this first mission is more of data collection. And so that is exactly what they are doing. And like I said, with data collection, you need to give them everything that they are requesting for. So we need that time and space to attend to them, just like um, um, you're doing an audit. You need to attend to whatever it is that they are asking for. And so once uh, you do that and it's completed, we will come to Parliament and also um, submit the mid-year. And this is something we've been doing every time. And we, we scheduled the date for 13th before the announcement of the engagement with the IMF. So clearly, as human as we are, we should all understand that in this um, data uh, finding uh, mission of the IMF, we need that space and time to address that and give them, once we are done, 25th, we'll come to Parliament and um, do the mid-year budget review. And you should all know that per the PFM law, we have up until 31st of July to do that. So it's still within, I mean, the law and the time. We're well, joined by Zumba, our parliamentary correspondent, Koko Santo, with more on this. Uh, to start with, uh, we're, still on go we're still going by the change in dates to the 25th instead of the earlier 20th date, aren't we, Koko? So the information that we are getting from the finance ministry, just like the play there from the deputy minister, is that the negotiation is such a key part and there are things that may come up to be included in the media budget review. And so government wants to wait until the talks conclude next week. The talks conclude not necessarily uh, an agreement on a deal, but for the initial talks to have concluded next week, by, by which time government would have had a fair idea of some of the key issues for them to be included in the meeting budget review. And so the new date we are we are we have it now from the deputy finance minister, Bill Asia, sorry, it's 25th. That is next um, the 25th of um, July, so that the media budget review will be delivered to MPs. So that's going to be in a week's time. How is the minority in parliament taking all this? Well, they do not have much challenge to this. They actually believe that it's important that government holds on because if there are key issues that comes out from the talks with the IMF, which must be inculcated in the media budget review for government to implement, then it is very important for them to hold on. And so we do not have much challenge. Only that they are concerned that the parliament originally had scheduled 27th of July to rise. And if they were going on break at that period and you are doing a media budget review two days prior, it means probably that the, the date for the, the rise of the house would have to be extended a bit or the schedule will be packed. And so that, those are their concerns. But in terms of the principle, the, the, the idea behind the decision, they fully support it. And I think government has taken a decision in that right regard for now. I wanted to fill us in on the expected meeting between the IMF and Parliament's Finance Committee. We're expecting that to begin today, if not now. What's the update from both sides as we speak? Has it happened yet? So the meeting started at uh, around 4 p.m. Just about 3.50, the officials from the IMF arrived. We, knew, we know that they actually met the vice president today. And so it, is, it was expected that right from that meeting, they would drive into Parliament. They did. And around 4 p.m., members of the finance committee who are still doing business on the floor of the house, you could see them filing out. And so we understand that the meeting is still going on. It's been about one hour, 10 minutes now. It wasn't expected to take this long, but the meeting is still ongoing. What we get is that the minority are seeking to put what they call the accurate figures for the economy to be 
exposed to the IMF. Major, my, majority side said government has nothing to hide, and that government has been consistent and truthful to Ghanaians. They're speaking to some minority MPs who believe that government has just picked over the figures and have exposed the figures to Ghanaians which are not representative of the real state of the economy. And so they are expecting that this meeting will be such an avenue to pass on this data. And so the meeting is still ongoing. We do not know what exactly the key issues are being discussed, but it's expected that by around 6 p.m., this meeting would have concluded and they will get some details from that meeting. And we're looking forward to that. Basically, it's a fact-finding mission. So we're going to be looking forward to seeing how it pans out. We're grateful to our parliamentary correspondent there. We're still stay with the IMF because an associate professor of finance at the University of Ghana Business School, Elik Blim Komla Abloyo, has called for a change in the structure of Ghana's economy. According to him, this is one of the prudent measures needed to stabilize the economy. Speaking on the Super Morning Show on Joy FM, Professor Abloyo said Ghana can actualize its dream of becoming a wealthy nation by changing the structure of its economy rather than seeking an IMF program. We need to reduce our debt or try to manage it. Two, we need to ensure exchange rate stability. Three, we need to increase our level of reserves at the Bank of Ghana. Four, we need to work on reducing unemployment. Five, we need to work on increasing the level of savings in the economy. It's another key factor. Six, our perennial high interest rates <laughs> is something that we need to work on. Okay. So, can your, can your engine tell us, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. by how much mm -hmm. we would need to reduce our debt yes. in order to be safe from yes. the IMF? Yes, we can do that. So, you can do a simulation analysis. What if analysis? What if our debt fell to... To 60 percent what if we're able to improve financial development from the current level to let's say about uh so if you take our, our financial development is very low usually it's about 30 percent of gdp what if we're able to increase that what if we're able to reduce unemployment at which exchange rate level would our dependency reduce for me what the imf program does for us now is to provide some space <laughs> and 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 time in a sense to be able to put our house in order oh. so that gives us time in the short to medium term to be able to implement the necessary policies to ensure that the economy is stronger that we're able to change the structure of the economy other than that if the structure of the economy doesn't change then we will be frequent <laughs> mm. we'll be frequenting IMF.